<sighs> there we go again, not unmuting, because I guess I had it. Well, I guess you were listening to me get ready, because I definitely hit the button. So here we go again. Take two. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 30 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And today we're going to have some fun. I felt the need to just kind of be relaxed. And what I do when I relax is I like to paint, draw, doodle. And that includes doodling with the sewing machine. So today we're going to ink and so so this will be the first time i've tried to accomplish both live at the same time crossing fingers everything will go well i have an error message up here oh they thought i wanted to exit <laughs> gosh no my dog has the worst allergies this season she's sneezing where are you how about you guys? Are you guys having allergies this season? We're having a lot more rain than we have for the last couple of years, and uh, I'm feeling a little bit allergy-ish today. Hi, Tina. You can hear me now, though, right? <laughs> Hi, Lorinda. I got a different setup, so my brain's going, what are we doing? Usually I have to look off to the side to see your chat, but now it's right in front of me. So... Um, I shouldn't have to turn my head so much, which was bugging me. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome. And for any of you that are lurking in the background that can't figure out how to get to the live chat, I think you have to be actually subscribed to YouTube and log in in order to chat because they want to keep up on people and make sure they behave themselves when they're in the chat from Ohio. So we're Oregon, Ohio, and I'm in Arizona. And I have a bunch of stuff on the table and my sewing machine pushed aside a little bit. So I listen to videos like you're watching now. And I had someone talk to me about how he organizes himself better by writing in notebooks every day. So I decided to get myself some notebooks and I thought, how unattractive the cover is and so then I started thinking well I'm going to make a fabric cover for my notebook and and then I bought another notebook <laughs> because I not only need to write but I also need to doodle and doodling is a part of creating patterns and so this is one of my doodles that I worked on this week. And I was thinking, wow, wouldn't that be a neat cover for my book? And I could paint it, obviously, but I'm in the sewing industry. So we're going to use the Octi Hoops today for the sewing part. And they come with two handles, which is what I'm looking for. I put some lotion on my hands and my fingers are really slippery. So the octaves come with two handles and the handles kind of act like a writing instrument. I like writing with a pen. So as I worked through my notebook here, you can see some of the doodles. That's like an owl I was thinking of. And here's another one. And and this helps you to get the hang of drawing, but it also helps you get the hang of using the Octi Hoops because we do the same motion with a pen that we do with the Octi Hoops. So here, if I wanted to do that, I would draw a circle and go out and come back, go out and come back. And if I'm on a sewing machine well I can't just pick up my needle and move it over can I so I have to keep it down and that's why I recommend rehearsing your quilting on paper first and know that it is harder to draw on paper than it is to draw on the actual fabric because 
when you use a writing instrument like this, we have to squeeze it. If we don't squeeze it, when we push down, the pen slides out from our fingers. And so we have to not only squeeze that, but push down. And that pushing down, we're pushing against something that's hard. And that, cause, that creates resistance. And resistance also causes your hand to become sore. I'm sure you're familiar with the cramping of the hand from writing too much, unless you don't write a lot. So if you wanted to do something like this, it's a good idea to practice with the paper so that you're ready to use the hoops and to create that same motion by putting your hand down and then drawing like that, which will make more sense when we have fabric. So I'm going to put these aside as we ink the fabric because part of the cool thing of this is we're going to ink first because if you don't ink first, the ink gets on your thread. So if you want your thread to show up pretty, well, you don't want to put your thread down first and then ink over it because you're going to get the ink on the thread and change the color of the thread. Okay, so put them there. That was last week's lesson was the skirt on the American Girl doll back there. If, you didn't, if you're interested in making doll clothes, be sure to check that out. And Fabrically Speaking Live is a playlist on my YouTube channel. If you look at the YouTube channel and you click on playlists, you'll see it show up. I would show you, but it can make the whole feed go down if I go on my channel while I'm live. So I have this design. And I'm going to show you the easiest possible way to ink. So if you've never inked before, there's no way you won't feel brave enough to do this. This is our Caterpillar light tablet, and it allows you to look through your fabric to see the design. And I, I will be giving you this design to print out. I haven't had a chance to do that yet because I designed this today. And this looks darker to you than it does to me because this makes the camera, the light from this makes the camera's eyes kind of close up. So that's what I'm able to see through my fabric when I turn this on. And that is something that you could do to help you place the design on the fabric. This is going to be the front of the cover. So you want to paint the front of the cover on the right side of your fabric. I will be including a pattern for the actual notebook, but we're not going to sew the notebook this week. We're going to do that next week. This is a two part video series on making this notebook cover. It'd be a great gift for Christmas or for yourself with the sewing machine in the area and all this electronics. I'm a little hesitant to just bring a whole bunch of water in here. So, but the best way to do this particular technique is to do it wet. And since I don't know where on the fabric the design's going to go, I really first should outline or draw out the outline of the book to make sure that I am inking it straight. To determine if you're straight, you can fold your fabric once. And then twice, I just want to get to the inking part. <laughs> it's a small group today. Where is everybody? Oh, I forgot to tell everyone in the school. Hi, Lorinda. I think I said I already. So I just creased it in the middle. And now I have this X. And that will help you to position your book you can measure from that crease over so that you know that you're centered. And this, no, you know you have cushion now that you can, you'll be able to cut this to size because this is smaller than the overall material. Another thing to consider is that this is going to wrap around the book. Some of it's going to be inside and there'll be other fabrics. So you, you might want to do what you're going to do on this on another piece of fabric, the same size. 
and use the same colors so that the inside of the book kind of matches the outside of the book. And you can do the back first and then the front second so that if you do the, the back better than the front, no one will have to see the back and you can enjoy the front, your second attempt. Sorry, I, I had to sneeze. <laughs> so, All right. So you don't want to use a regular pen. You want to use something that can iron away or wash away, but not wash away because we're going to use water. This is the friction pins, and I will have them on our site eventually. Our inks have come in. My son is working diligently on getting them up. We'll be sending out our newsletter very soon to announce all of the colors are now in. And, and we already did have some inks on our site. We have the Fabric Creations inks and we have these Lemures coming in. We'll have this starter pack up on our site, hopefully by the weekend. In the meantime, you can order all of the inks in the opaque. We already we have those in stock and on our site. And then the entire collection of the Fabric Creations, which both work beautifully on fabric. And one of the things I love about them is that I don't really have to do any preparation. I don't even have to heat set them. I have been able to just immediately take them to the washing machine and they have been color fast. So you don't have to worry about that. Today I have a blow dryer in here and I wired it way out into another area so that it doesn't make our whole set go down. So a blow dryer is good for today's lesson and know that I have never done this before. All I'm doing is designing it in my head and today we'll see if what I think will happen will happen. The color choices that we're going to use are based on what is in this template. Of course, you can change that as you want. So we can, I've got purple and I've got some blue and yellow and orange and, and green. So let me see if I can grab some of these. This is the sour apple. I'm going to grab these and then talk. Some of the colors have been discontinued, so I have to be careful not to show you something that you can't get. Whoops. <laughs> And I'm not going to use any white today. The fabric itself is the white. And I'm not using bright white fabric. You could, however, if you choose to. Okay. So basically what I want to do is kind of imply where I want my sunflowers to be, my large sunflowers. And I'm definitely on a sunflower kick lately <laughs> for any of you that know that everything I seem to be teaching lately is sunflower based so I'm positioning that and what you see on top of this is the glass this is the cutter pillar light tablet and it is available on our site in three different types that's the name right there. And I don't favor one of these inks over the other. I love them both equally. Another thing that I'm using today are bottles of my Stevia. <laughs> and uh, no, I'm not using Stevia. But I have a really hard time throwing away functional bottles. Do any of you, if you do hit a, a thumbs up, this is the uh, 
A really neat way to spread out ink and have it blend out evenly without needing a brush. But we have no ink inside of this bottle yet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add some ink into the bottle. And I'm gonna definitely, definitely be using more yellow. This is the real yellow on our site. And I am shaking it before, as you can see. Ink goes a long way. Trying to see where this camera is focused. <laughs> if you get some on you, it's fine if it gets on your fingers, but if it gets on your clothing, remember what I said, it's, it's going to stay. I think I put about a teaspoon in there. And it's not going to bother me because I'm going to use a lot of it. I was going to put a clean white sticker on here and then smear it but I could probably smear it so now I know that this is going to be yellow and close it and we can test to see how well this See how pretty that looks? I may have to change this camera angle. So if we just do a, a do it like that, now we're gonna get a circle. Maybe <laughs> we're getting more of a well it's it's getting more round as it spreads out. And I'm gonna mute. Boy, that is a high-powered <laughs> blow dryer. I was trying to find my little travel one, but I haven't traveled in a while, so I don't know where it is. Now that is set, kind of. It's still a little damp. But if we take and we add more yellow to that now, we do a smaller amount. It's not going centered. I think it would work better with my board. But basically what we're trying to do is imply where we're going to put our sunflowers. You can always add more ink if you want. And also go around. Remember, we're going to make the, the thread is going to make this what it really is. This is just our background colors. And I usually get carried away and do too much. So see how it's not round and that's okay. Because this is all blended out and blurry and you can see that the yellow does surpass the sunflowers all over it. I should be blow drying this in between, I think. But I wanna, I was gonna do this, I was gonna do this uh, myself first, and then as usual, I, I say that almost every week, don't I? I know how you guys love purple. 
and it's my book cover but I'm still gonna put purple on it and I'm not wearing a purple jacket today but sometimes I wear my purple jacket just for you guys oh another thing you can do instead of that I have one ready is you can get these little travel spray bottles and you can just spray see how it gives a, a, a misty this one's got <laughs> it's clogged up make sure you don't let your spray things get clogged up some of you feel like that you can never have too much purple and I love splatters so this is just a not a very good bottle there are better ones could even use these when they're all used up but I still have some eyeglass cleaner in there so I'm not willing to give this one up yet <laughs> so I am going to do the purple in one of these bottles one two three four five drops these hold two fluid ounces so that's two fluid ounces four drops to two fluid ounces hello Jess and Dottie from Kentucky which area of Kentucky I've had some fun times in Louisville And you can see by looking at the dropper how much is in there and this is just to add color I'm probably not mixing it enough <laughs> this is just basically we're making fabric and then afterward because I have the ability to blow dry it I'm gonna go ahead and quilt it and we're gonna quilt the lines that we would draw so we're gonna draw the lines that make it actually into something you can also use paint brushes but that's really not what I'm trying to teach you today if you don't have any of these bottles though you'd be like come on give me another way to do it right now those of you who already have the ink so you can mix in this is something that I got from one of my thread suppliers and I think I may actually see if I can't buy these from them so that you guys could get these trays they're really nice just the right amount to mix the ink what do you think should I get those and then we off we offer brushes if you don't already have some make sure you always screw things on tight <laughs> especially if you're like me and tipping things over so you could say if you wanted to make a specific line then you can make that line because you have the control of the brush but you can see how thin this is if you want you can make it thicker by just adding more ink to the water and this changes the value of the color so one color is the equivalent of like 12 different values of that same color so all of these are the same purple we have the one that I dripped on there what spread out to create another like lavender on the perimeter going around and then the splatter that you create and I really do love the splatter what it does is it makes the stitching more forgiving so if you're afraid that your mistakes will show up it's a good thing to do but you could go like this and do swirls 
I really should move this this way, right? There we go. But I wouldn't do that for this lesson. I would try to keep it soft and spread out because you don't want to get lost in the actual stitching and or let get lost in the inks and forget where to stitch. It's good also to wet the fabric in its entirety so that the colors blend into one another. Remember this is a, a glass that you can purchase for your cutter pillar tablet so that you don't ruin the surface of your cutter pillar. I'm getting better at saying cutter pillar. So now I need a center for that and maybe a s some other colors to make different flowers. I also need green for the leaves. This one's plugged up. I want green. I think I'm going to go back to the, the bottles. Can always have a bottle of green. It's nice, this loose technique, you don't have to worry about making bubbles as you shake it. Ah, don't break your glass with a glass bottle. <laughs> This is a good way to shake it when you're mixing a thick ink in there. Wouldn't be a bad idea to shake. <laughs> I didn't shake the green before I put it in there. It's no fun when you can't see it, is it? I'll turn the light off so you can see better. So leaves on sunflowers are rather large and they are not just going to be one color green because the shadows that cast on your leaves are also having a mixture of flowers in this design. So that's one shade of green. Now I can take this one, which is a darker apple green. <laughs> So the other one is apple green and this is apple green. Two different companies' ideas of apple green. This is actually much thicker and it is also used for screen printing, which is something I'm gonna show you guys how to do as time goes on. Whoops. Put this back. How are you all doing tonight? So are you guys enjoying this or are you going, come on, get to the quilting? This is a sewing show. Know that I have a new channel opening up soon. That's going to be called Beyond the Brushstrokes, and it'll be art-based. So I may do things like this in my art site and then film the sewing part in the sewing site and send you back and forth If for those of you who don't really have interest in, in actually doing the inking part. So since I am trying to get some stems in there, and I can forget to put them in. Just drawing them on there. I think we're pretty much, oh, I didn't do any other flowers, but I think, and then you can take and you can mix your colors. So if I take some purple and bring it into the green, now I get a totally different look. 
I didn't do the brown yet. And if I mix, oh, that, that needs to be shook. You're enjoying this good. Didn't shake it. So the part that mixes and in, in into the pigment <laughs> just came out all by itself, which is not going to give me any color at all. If you want to control where your ink goes, say you wanted to write your name on there, you could write your name with our liquid based glue and then ink over it and then after you're done inking, you wet it and the liquid based glue will come off and you'll have white where your glue was. You can also use different mediums for that that are available for inking. There we go. So I'm going to squirt right in the middle of the flowers because that is where I want the brown to go. And I need it to be thinner than that. Don't want it to be so dark that you can't see your thread. You can also put it on there and then spray. This is a sloppy kind of style. I'm not going to do the back because I don't want you guys to have to wait. What else could I do here? Remember, we want to use the thread to draw. Well, I forgot to bring something to clean my brush, so I'm going to use this, which is what you can also do to get your fabric wet. You could just submerge it in this, wring it out, and then start with it wet. If your fabric isn't wet, it won't, it won't spread out like that. But isn't that neat already, you guys? You like that? What other color could I bring in here? Let's see, orange? This one's really cool. I've, I don't think I've ever used it. This is coral in the uh, Fabric Creations ink. So there's two ink, two, well, there'll be three different ink sections inside of the supplies category at creativefeet.com. So be sure to check that out. And remember, we do have free shipping over $49. And when you buy ink, it can, it can weigh a lot. You can end up getting three bottles for free just because you're not paying the shipping on that. And sometimes it's just difficult to figure out where you're going to put your flowers when you're sewing with your sewing machine. So, and I tend to not want to do the right shape on a flower. And that's me, which I do a lot of this stuff. So in this case, I'm, I'm actually going to give myself the guide for these little flowers, simply because I'll forget to put them in or I will make them all weird shaped if I don't plan ahead. So you can do that by just pushing down. So you can just take your brush and load the ink. Remember this is wet and then just push down and pick it up. Notice that I turn my brush and you push it down and pick it up. Push down, push down as rotating. So this flower is kind of sideways and as many as you want. We don't have our centers yet on here.
see how easy that is, you guys? And this is a round brush. This is our number four round brush. If you're brave after, well, you didn't get to see that one at all, did you? The camera is really close. So I'm adding water to the mix. And then I'm going to put more water on my brush. So I dipped it in and you can see it, it's actually dripping. And I'm going to splatter this color. Because that's a really strong color. But if we splatter it in different areas, well now it's not going to detract so much from everything else. Let's see, I didn't splatter any green. So I'm going to splatter some green. It's also neat to take and mix two colors together. So now you're tonally the same in the same tone group because these colors all come from one another. So by mixing colors that you use separately together in a painting, it will always blend in with anything else that's on the fabric. You can also take and just drop it in there and Blend it. Now this is not pushing hard on this brush because that'll ruin it going side to side. There are better brushes for scrubbing the fabric. And a fan brush is another really neat brush to use to create different looks. So you can take and just kind of rock it and rock it and now it's creating these designs that you can turn into feathers maybe it'll help you guide for a feather and if you look at the artwork that i did which i'll show you i'll show you different styles of leaves i think we're pretty much done with the colors no let me do one more i wanted to have like a rusty color on the tips of the sunflowers. I don't want to do it because I can't figure out where to do it yet. So I'm going to do what I've been doing on, fa on paper. And I'm going to blow dry this fabric so that I can stitch right through it. Shouldn't take me very long to do. Just got to make sure that this is in a safe place. Pretty cool. Instant fabric. You don't have to go to the fabric store to get that. You can take any design from anywhere and put it beneath and ink over this glass. And uh, I'm going to mute while I blow dry and it's a good opportunity for you guys to ask questions as well I always dry my clean my brushes and dry them off and then lay them down flat I don't stick them inside of a jar and have them soak because uh, it's a bad habit I put the lid back on this what time are we on? Making good time. Be neat and tidy, put all your stuff away. You can brush after you've stitched as well to add accents. You just gotta be more careful. I've been dying to do this, you guys. I wanted to do it last week. I plan on, my daughter keeps giving me books, notebooks, and they're pretty on the outside. And uh, so I want to surprise her with a beautiful book with a quilted cover on it for Christmas. And... 
Don't you think that it's a nice thing to give? Let's see. And I got my glasses in, you guys. So I have now glasses everywhere. So I shouldn't be going, where are my glasses? Today I'm going to use the Super Universal 9014 needle for quilting, if you're not familiar with it. It is, actually I can use an 8012 on this. That's an 8012. The 9014 is more forgiving if you're new to quilting. You're less likely to break a needle. <clears throat> okay, I gotta be quiet in order to blow dry. <laughs> I cannot control that, so I'm going to clip it to the edge of the glass, which is elevated above the board, which is why I was able to put the design beneath it. And that design is going to help me stitch well. So I'm going to look at it and go, okay, that's the design. That's how I want to draw my petals. <clears throat> I should be able to put that in the school right away as soon as I'm done with the show today if any of you wanted to try this tonight you can doodle without any color as well just get better at quilting so now I've clipped in three locations the fabric to the board and now I can lift it up and blow dry it Was that terrible? How bad was that to hear the blow dryer, you guys? If it was bad, do a, just say, just say B. <laughs> or not bad if it wasn't bad, because I can keep talking while I blow dry. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I'm hearing it in my ear. I'm going to mute while I do this. Well, that was really loud to me. I don't know, Tina. I think you're, it depends how loud you have your, your sound on your, whatever device you're watching me on. I think that would have startled me if I were watching. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to unclip this and it is dry. And if you don't have it dry, what will happen is your needle will stick as it tries to leave the fabric. And it will cause shredding of thread and skip stitches. It's a little damp still, but maybe it'll be dry by the time I'm ready to sew. And the batting I'm going to use is the bamboo batting, the regular four ounce batting that you see at creativefeet.com. Hi, Susan. I think I blew 
batting fuzz around the around the room. <laughs> the bamboo batting is lovely, and all batting is basically not a solid of any kind. <clears throat> Excuse me. I might have to sneeze. Batting uh, is, is our fibers that can float in the air, really lightweight. And some are made from animal hair and some silkworms. And this is made from bamboo. Now, the bamboo batting, for some reason, has more sustainability than all of the others. The only one I didn't test against this is silk. But all of the other battings did not last as long as this one. And just handling your batting can make it break down. But it hasn't seemed to be a problem at all with the bamboo batting. <clears throat> and I talk about this often. Did any of you ever take a music class in elementary school and they had you use a bamboo recorder, which is kind of like a flute and you put your fingers on top and play it. And if you have, raise your hand inside of the chat and i used my grandfather's recorder which was given to my father when i was in school which i wish i still had i think i even had my kids use that when they were in elementary school so you never know it might be somewhere in a box and for some reason they just don't disappear so this for some reason is a very sustainable plant and so I'm not worried at all about my quilts dissipating or the batting actually dissolving or degrading or what's it called? It's called, well, anything that's alive starts to decompose once it's dead, right? So that's the problem with batting. And cotton batting rots away quite quickly. Now I have something that's 13 years old. Let's see if it's handy. Well, I don't have the 13 year old one, but I've shown it many times. And this is something really exciting that I'm going to teach you guys. See how I quilted that round design. And you're going to be able to do that with the octa hoops. But this was done many years ago and I have things that are like I said as long as they've been making it I think it's been 12 years now it's still damp I am gonna have to wet it this is kind of like an impressionistic art and now we're gonna make it more defined we're gonna make sure that your fabric is inside the perimeter of the batting so in other words cut your batting so it's wider than your actual fabric on all sides in case you end up wanting to use the back and you could ink right over this batting except for your batting would then have ink on it <laughs> I'm so excited oh I love the quilting part you guys when I first invented these I was so bad at quilting with them so if you think that I've always been really good at using them I haven't now, if you're worried about your ink ever going anywhere you could always heat it And I'm going to use my iron and try to just finish drying it.
No questions? Well, you're quiet today, you guys. <sighs> I feel like a nap. I forgot to drink coffee for two days, and I kept wondering why I was so tired. <laughs> So see how it's got that kind of background? And the lines are what we're gonna draw. And this may seem really intimidating. Like, yeah, right, I'm gonna be able to draw those lines. But I'm gonna show you how you can get that continuity. I'm not gonna try for duplicating this, but I'm gonna use this as a guide to help me to remember the shapes that I use. And when I do the, the sunflowers, what I did is start in the center with a center circle. And then I work my way around and around and around. And then once I reach this last line, I go smaller circles. And that gives you the look of a shadow without having to draw a shadow. Smaller circles cover up more fabric, creating the look of a darker thread without having to change the thread to a darker color. So there's math to this to get this to work. And it's not hard math. It's just like addition. I think it's dry. All right. I, I do not back my quilts when I do this type of work. So there's no need to put any backing. Bring my sewing machine over. Come on, baby. And I'm going to have to switch a camera. So I'm going to give you this to look at while I change my camera for the close. Here we go. This machine is in bad shape. It's, it's traveled all over and it got hurt on one of the shipments. So this is not sitting where it should. For those of you who have sewing machines that have similar damage to them, <laughs> Sorry if I flipped the cameras on you. It's because I moved a camera around, so I keep thinking I'm looking at the wrong screen. I have two screens to look at while I'm filming with you guys. So when we use the octahoops for free motion quilting, we use two frames. A lot of people think that we have magnets that are holding the fabric or the frames together, but we don't. The way these move together is by bringing the corners to one another. And then as long as you anchor the outside frame to the inside, you can spin them around and they stay together. And that has to do with the area of connection and the shape of the frames. We're not going to use three at once, we'll use two at once. And the one that you use in the, in the, on the top of your quilt it's based on the size of your hand. My hand is small, so this is the best one for mine. If your hand goes all the way to the perimeter of this one, then you could use the large one on the bottom and this one on top. Now this is what I'm telling you to do. It doesn't mean you have to do it. Because I have students that tell me they do this. They use the biggest frame on the bottom and then they bring the smaller frame in and they move the smaller frame around inside of that perimeter which is really difficult for my brain and also my machine is not on a flat surface so 
So if I were to just take this large hoop and put it underneath here, it would want to fall off the sewing machine a lot. When I work with the middle frame on top, I can put my fingers beneath it as I'm quilting and my thumb wraps around the top and holds the uh, small frame. And so I change from this position to this position. So I change from this position, which is governing the outside frame and then bringing the middle frame to it, to thumb bringing it in and hands, the other fingers, let me see if I can move my machine. My fingers go beneath the two frames like that when it goes out past the machine. And then I bring my fingers in like that. So the very, very light touch on these and these slide easily over the surface of the sewing machine. For some reason we have really good light today. Everything is different. My laser light is on. <laughs> How do I turn that on? There we go. Don't want that on. Okay. It's probably because I moved everything around. All right. I'm going to choose a color of thread that I want to use. If you use a dark color of thread, well, it's going to really show up on that fabric. And, and that may be what you want, because look, this is black. Black ink. The problem with using a dark color thread is you may not be ready for that dark of a color. You might want to use a color that's a little bit tonally, maybe in the, med in the middle range. But I'm going to go for it and use a dark color, because you guys all love purple so much. I may as well use purple. Why not? Should I use purple or black? Or or like a dark blue. I have this really pretty blue that I like. See the two colors? I'm going to take a sip and mute myself for a second. I'm going to use this color, but you could always change and use like a variety of different colors. You could actually use yellow for your sunflowers and switch to using a color that complements these little flowers and then greens for your green flowers. It's really entirely up to you. <clears throat> it's up to you. And it really doesn't matter what you use in the bobbin other than if I'm going to use a dark color thread on the top, I'm going to use a dark colored bobbin in the bottom. That way, if anything causes the bobbin thread to pull up to the top, it doesn't show up and look messy. And I've already got wob wobbins. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've already got bobbins. I think there's already a blue in there. I think, isn't that, is that too bright? I'm going to turn the light down on the machine. That's a little better. Makes the colors look better. I moved I moved the TV around and I, it changed the whole lighting in here. I'm so delighted. So I'm pretty sure that's the same bobbin that's in there. Whoop! Oh, I dropped the bobbin. <laughs> no. I remember when I had a cat and it was like he was just waiting for a bobbin to drop. Where is it? Come here, bobbin.
feel like I'm melting in here. <laughs> the air conditioner is really hot today up here. Uh, 90 something degrees. Purple. Hi, Lynn. Thank you for suggesting purple. I could I can do purple, but I really want to contrast the colors. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the octahoops, this is how I would embroider with it. You can just take a piece of fabric and lay it right over the top of our stabilizer and embroider right on it. So this is a stabilizer that adheres to the back of our frame. This is called our stick and tear stabilizer. So when you're looking through my videos, look for embroidery, free motion embroidery, and you'll learn more about how to use the octahoops for all of the different embroidery techniques that you do with a traditional embroidery machine. You can do it with your regular sewing machine. All right. To get ready for, for quilting and embroidery, remove the foot. This is my sequins and ribbon foot. We used that last week to sew the, uh, the little doll skirt and put ribbon on it. And then I'm going to remove my machine snap-on adapter. You do that by turning and loosening this screw right here, and this whole assembly will drop off. If you have a fop sewing machine, your screw may be really small, and it might be recessed down inside of your snap-on adapter. And if it is, then yours won't fall off without the screw being removed. Put this in a safe spot. This is my under the sea machine. That's a sea turtle, a little octopus over here. This, I feel so bad for this machine every time I use it because it got hurt. Pardon my arm. The needle that I used last on that skirt was the elastic. So this is a stretch needle. And I usually have my needle package sitting out ready. We have the option of using the 9014 or the 8012 on the super nonstick needle. You can also go ahead and try just using a universal needle. If you're working with a really thick thread, and this is a 40 weight thread, then you're going to want to use a thicker or a bigger needle to accommodate the thicker thread. You're less likely to skip a stitch when working with a 9014 needle with 40 weight thread. If you don't want your stitches to show a lot because you're just learning, then don't use the 40 weight. And this is the 40 weight polyfast that you can find at creativefeet.com. We have the Deco Bob, which is 80 weight, and then we have the Invisifil, which is 100 weight. Now this one would barely show up on this quilt and could be really fun to use in the, in the outskirts of this design to practice your stippling and not, not feel so stressed because the thread doesn't show up as much. And this, you can use an 80-12 needle without risking having any shredding of your thread. It's a delightful thread and used a lot by long armors now. But when you want your thread to really stand out, and I do, I want you to be able to see the lines like you see the lines on this paper. So I'm going for it. I'm going for a 40 weight thread. And I'm going to use a 90-14 so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm using the super universal needle because it's less likely to skip a stitch than any other. This is a delightful needle. I think of it as the, the uh, like Superman and it's the super needle. <laughs> it has a coating on it that makes it less likely to stick to your fabric. It also has a special design for the thread to drop into the eye of the needle, which helps it 
your sewing machine at the hook assembly to form a stitch better using a straight stitch and I'm going to reduce my thread tension from a normal tension to a one number less than normal for my machine normal is 4.0 and one number less is 3.0 so I just took it down and I would show you but I can't move my camera to the front of the machine still have to thread the machine do any of you have any questions right now hi Kimberly welcome to the feed or to the stream Where's the end? I do have my tweezers. I found them, you guys. And I'm going to be disciplined. I'm not going to carry my little scissors out. And I'm not carrying my tweezers out of this room again. <laughs> you think I'm going to be able to do that? I have something super exciting to tell you about our scissors, by the way. If you're left-handed... I had somebody call and ask about the three hole scissors on whether or not they could be used left handed. And there, are, while there are two sizes available, currently the large is not available. This is August 5th of 2021. So if it's not that year, you might want to check again. I am not left-handed and honestly I don't think I ever tried cutting with left hand before and since these have a special way that you hold them where you put your all of your fingers have a spot and that takes the stress off the top of your hand so if you ever get crampy when working with scissors these will be a relaxing feel for you and they also have serrated blades which makes it so that when you cut something it holds the fabric in the air for you. So when you go like, the scissor itself was picking up the, the octahoops, let's say. I'm trying not to cut too much because this is my project, but oh, I haven't moved the camera. <laughs> All right, one more try. So you see how I go like this? And I'm able to curve and move it and it holds the fabric. Now this is my right hand. Now I'm going to switch to left hand. Which I wasn't even sure I could even cut left handed. But I can. And it works beautifully. So in other words the blades don't get stuck. And when you usually when you use a left handed or a right handed scissor they kind of fold like that, whereas this does not do that, even when I cut really curvy. <laughs> They're beautiful scissors. They're the Appliquick scissors. So that was a phone call that I got yesterday, and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to try it right now so that I am I am the one telling you whether or not it works rather than guessing or trusting somebody else's opinion. Threading my needle. We're going to start in the middle of the sunflower. Nothing like starting at the most intense part. This frame is going to go beneath the quilt, so you won't be able to see it. I wonder if I don't even need that light. And then this one comes down like that. And so the quilt will be over this frame, and then I'll be holding them like that. My right hand, because I'm right-handed, if you're left-handed, you would do this. And rest your hand on that frame, which you won't be able to see, but you'll be able to feel it. And then draw with this hand. But I'm right-handed, so this is my positioning. Hand resting on that frame, and then drawing like this. And while doing that, my elbow is resting. Push the machine further away from you, I can't do that because I have the camera tight on the on the sewing machine. But I do want to make sure my elbow is not resting on the edge of the table. And you're, you're not used to being able to rest your elbows when quilting. 
if you don't already have the Octi Hoops. So um, it's a good idea to have like something to rest your elbow on so that you don't get hurt from pushing, from relaxing basically when you use these. If you need glasses, you need to wear the glasses. And I'm gonna doodle for a second before I quilt so that you can see what it is that I'm doing. Giving you the math so you know how to do this when you're home. Because the sewing machine, I, I noticed the camera can't keep up with the speed of the machine. And you can't always see what my needle is actually doing because, well, I can sew pretty fast. So I think I'll use the close camera so you can really see. Yeah, look at that. There we go. So this is what I'm doing when I'm sewing. First off, I'm holding the hoop instead of this pen, but this is the steps for doing the circle. So you start in the middle. So I make a full circle and then I go left and I, I mean right. <laughs> then I say left, come all the way around and go around, round. So I see how I'm alternating doing round, go the opposite direction, and now I've made a little flower. Then everywhere there's a V, this is where you drop your next circle. And go around and around and just keep doing that. And try not to push hard. On a real soft touch. This is teaching you how not to squeeze hard on that on the handle for the octahoops as well. But you see how it's just keeps dropping right next to it and creating these circles getting bigger and bigger right left right left but I'm going all the way around left right left right now I was going to show you another thing but I'm not going to today because baby steps let's start you out with circles which are also known as pebbles by the way if you say circle, 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 your brain will help you draw a circle better. <clears throat> now, once I get to where I feel like the circle's big enough, and some flowers are varying in size, sometimes their circles are smaller, sometimes they're bigger, it's up to you as to what size circle you want to draw. But once you've finalized the size of the center, then we go, okay, I'm going to make little circles now. And you go around and around left, right, left, right. And I say that in my head as I'm drawing. If I do that while I'm on with you live, I have to be co totally quiet. But just know that I am doing right, left in my head, right, left, right, left, so I don't get lost, right, left, because you're going around and you're and it'll kind of feel like you're on a ride. Because <laughs> you're going around in a circle. If you practice this sitting on the couch, just keep doodling until you get good at making these little circles. You can do a sea turtle and you can do all kinds of different designs with these circles. Once you do that, now you go, okay, two circles for every first petal. So you go and you want the point of the next petal to come up halfway where the two circles come together. And then you come down. And you go up and think, I'm going halfway, 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 halfway. And if you don't think I'm in my head saying this, I am. Halfway, halfway, halfway. Because you can't see where you're going as you're going around. And with paper, I'm, I'm able to move it. But when we're quilting, it's going to be completely different. So much easier when you're quilting. Because when you're quilting, you're not, you're not over the image. You're out here. And the needle is there. So it's going to be, this is why I say it's easier on a quilt. So halfway between the two, the point is directly above the, where the two circles meet. Okay, so halfway, and I can't see, and I can't see. This is what's wrong with having a foot on the machine. When you have a foot on the machine, you also can't see as you're coming around either. 
Okay, so now once you've done that, now that's cool and that's cute all in itself, isn't it? You might go, oh, thank God, okay, I'm done. Now I can't do any more today. I'm going to start again tomorrow. <laughs> but if you feel relaxed after you do that, okay, now you're going to go, okay, so we got three pedals now. So for every third pedal, we go to the outside of the pedal, come up and go all the way to the third pedal, no matter what, up, go all the way to the third pedal. So the center is above the center pedal, come all the way over. No matter what, no matter how far you feel like you're going, do that third one over, third one over. And mathematically, it just works. It's, it's quite something. And then you can just stop if you want and go, phew, I'm done. <laughs> or you can keep going. And you can do another pedal. You can go up. And now we have a pedal behind that pedal. And just keep going. So that's the math really the cool thing about doing these these sunflowers and you can also go back to the point and come up and go to that point and now we go up and over and up and over but that isn't really what I do and now I'm like okay I'm committed so I'm just going to keep doing it as long as you have continuity nobody will know that you messed up but when you have the sewing machine needle, you cannot stop and move over. You're kind of stuck. When you want to do a leaf, come out. And then I, I do a variety of different things. This is, I did, the, I did that wrong. So I'll just go like this and go, okay, I'm going to do a feather here. Kind of skinny feathers, huh? But so what? It's our design. Nobody knows what we were going to do. My brain is just having a hard time because I'm talking while I'm drawing. So a sunflower leaf is more like a heart. So it has like a, comes out and it goes like this. Comes to a heart shape. And you go over and come back. Go over come back. So you see the principles behind quilting when drawing is don't pick up the pen. And you can go outside and echo quilt. And, all right, so get to the quilting part. What do you think? Do you feel brave? Are you ready to do it? Are you ready to try this? Remember, if you're all alone, nobody's watching. There's no reason not to give it a go. So once again, I'm taking this frame and going and putting it beneath. And uh, also I recommend, I say this a lot, and it's important to look at them and go, I like you, you're familiar to me, you're my friend. These are not scary. Go into the mirror, into the bathroom and go, I can do this, I can do this. When you get to the sewing machine, you go, I can do this. This is okay, this is easy, I can do this. <laughs> Comfort yourself. Breathe in and out and just try to really loosen up your body and forget all of your past experiences with quilting because the octahoops is completely unique to all other types of quilting. Take and place that hoop beneath it and now it's just, just vanished. I can't even see it. How am I supposed to use it? This one is going to drop inside of the perimeter of that one. So you now know that that frame is there it's just on the outside of it and beneath it. Then we take the two frames and bring them together and now the whole quilt becomes connected to the frames. Even though nothing is in fact connected to anything, they move simultaneously. And my machine is in really bad shape under there, so we'll see how well I can quilt with an uneven surface. For those of you who have an uneven surface, know that I don't push down. If you push down, you'll get stuck on your machine. This is the normal instinctual thing people do when they first start learning is they kind of grab the handle and push down as they go. Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. Well, you know, you can watch this recorded afterward. I'll say a prayer for you guys. All right, here we go. I'm gonna find my center of the sunflower. 
And I, got, I need to drink a little water because I'm talking so much. When I drink water, I mute myself. So I'm going to be quiet for a second. Okay, so remember what I did before, and I need to find my glasses. <laughs> they weren't lost, they were just on the table. These are my new ones. I really like them. They're a little artsy. They're stronger though than my other ones. I didn't know what size I had gotten before, so it's quite something. So I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up. And it's really small, or really short, because I use the scissor thing. These are my favorite tweezers. These are the Apple Quick tweezers. They are really, really great surface. Boy, that bobbin tension feels really tight. Okay, so I lowered the presser foot despite there not being a presser foot there. I think that's good. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed, and I'm going to draw that first circle. Holding, holding down onto the thread, not grabbing it, but just holding down on it. I have to move this mic, it's too much in my line of sight. Okay, now draw a circle. And I also reduced my speed control a little bit. My foot control is stuck on something. Elbows down, shoulders relax. Draw a circle. And now I'm going to cut that thread. And really, I think I should be using a 12. These also allow you to cut left and right-handed. And they are also serrated, so they hold on really well. Something's pulling. It might be just that I need to change this needle. It's too big. If I'm getting too quiet, sorry. I'll try to talk up. It's the mic's really close to me, so I hesitate to get too loud. Circle. Left. What am I hearing? Something's different. So I'm trying to figure out what's going wrong, because there's something wrong. I think the machine just needs to get serviced. So I've made the circle. Can you guys see that? It's on the brown. You probably can't. <coughs> so just like what I did before, now I'm at the V. It definitely sounds weird. Right, left, right, left. But notice that I can see my hand isn't over the circles. So it's easier to spot where you're sewing because there's no presser foot in your way. And your hand is not over the work like it is when you write with a pen. But it is going to feel a little weird to you in the beginning. Now move the hoops so I can get more comfortable. Elbows always down, shoulders always relaxed. Whoops. <laughs> That's okay. I'll fix that when we go around. My foot control is acting weird. I 
I actually kind of feel like I need to stop and oil my machine. Now we're coming up on the yellow area. So you'll be able to see the stitching better. Left and right. Notice I don't go really fast. There's no rule saying you have to go fast. This is where my mistake was that you can't see anymore. Having a consistent speed, resting your elbows, making sure that you don't go faster than feels comfortable for you, faster than your eyesight can handle. I stop and readjust, elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Okay, so now I've gone around the circle. Now I'm going to come up and go halfway in two circles, two circles, two circles, two circles. Okay, that's a big circle, so my brain did not like it, but it's got to go there. Two circles. See how that's coming together? I don't know. That knee, you guys? Still trying to figure out what's going on with my machine, though. Okay, so now what's the rule? I don't know. I got uh, three circles is too much. I think I'm just going to go two circles because I didn't make this as big as I did on the f on the fabric. So I'm going to go two circles and I'm going to have the point do the exact same thing I did, except for it's going to be the petal. Darn petal. Remember, we're drawing without a drawing. And now I'm going to make... I'm going to go halfway up and come up. Go up and over and up and over. Halfway down and up and over. And quilting allows you to go over where you've already been. Stippling is not going over where you've already been. So now I'm going to do a leaf. Because I can see my pattern is right here. Or I have the green, which kind of wakes me up to the fact that there are leaves. And I'm going to come back down. And do the that heart shape. And then I don't look where I'm at. I look where I'm going. So I'm going to go to there. So I'm kind of looking here first. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Now I'm going to come down a little bit and come over. Come down a little bit, come over. Come down, whoops, and over. Now I'm looking through and around lights and microphones. When, I'm do, when I do things by myself, I do a better job than when I'm filming live. But hey, you know, perfect is not fun as I think Tina says, being perfect's no fun. Now, to make that not stand out as much, if I go over the whole leaf again, it'll make it dark all the way around and having it not always be on it, but have it deliberately be off it now and then, then implies that that's what the artist decided to do, to deliberately not go always on that same line. See how that now looks like a design? Now I'm going to, oh, I forgot to lower the feet dogs. And I got totally distracted because of that. I'm going to lower the feet dogs. So if you've ever wondered if you can 
quilt without your feed dogs being lowered. All of what you just saw me do was with the feed dogs up. And uh, I don't, I still don't think that's what I'm hearing. I think it's just, it is time for me to take this machine in for service. As it's been a couple of years, I am a mechanic and I do maintenance on them, but it, you still have to take your sewing machine in for a mechanic to do some adjustments, especially when it's a computerized machine like this. So this is one of the things that was in front of me. This is another thing that's in front of me is the microphone. So, and this is why I do have a harder time when I'm here because I can't do what you should do, which is push your machine farther away from you. If your machine is farther away from you, then you can rest your body. And I am not resting either. So I don't have as much control as you will if you sit like this with your elbows down. and Kind of like you're hanging out with your friends and just talking like we are right now. So where can you get a replacement peg? At creativefeet.com, click on the products link and then Octi Hoops, and you'll see that replacement pegs are, we don't call them pegs, you guys call them pegs. <laughs> so they're called replacement handles. Any other questions? Yes, it, it will be a notebook cover. Man, I can't see without these anymore. <laughs> I'm going to quilt a little bit resting just so you guys can see that this is the proper position. The dogs are now down and uh, much easier. Well, it's actually not easier at all. It didn't change anything. So I'm echo quilting and I scoot. When I scoot the bottom frame and then I move the top frame over and now elbows down, shoulders relax. I want to move the quilt. This is where you might get, go, what do I do to move the quilt? And Because you don't want to move the quilt because the needle has to come down where it left off. So how do you move the hoops or what you're trying to move? So you just put your finger down on your quilt and just kind of move the bottom frame and move the top frame. And that's how you advance around the quilt. And you can also spin the quilt around if by just moving it makes you uncomfortable with where you have all of the quilt itself. My arm is always resting on the table itself. And then I rest my hand on the frame that sits beneath. So my hand is on that frame right there, but my arm is on the machine. If you lay your arm on the quilt, you won't be able to move the quilt. So. It's just this one little area that your arm needs to be resting. And you don't need a presser foot, which eliminates the chance of puckering the fabric. And I'm echo quilting, which is going a distance away from the actual flower. <laughs> and I am going to stop doing it without you being able to see, because that's no fun. Oh, wait a minute. Was that showing up good? <gasps> I might be able to lay my arms down. Look at that. I didn't even try. Oh, it's just my body's going to be more in this in this shot. All right. It's time for me to peek. And if I were peeking at this more, then I could do more like that. Like, I didn't do the center as big, but I'm also trying not to do a big, huge design because this is just a little notebook cover. And I also have so much on my table. I need my little pad I have for my elbow. All right, microphone. Is it better over here? Okie dokie, what design should I do? I haven't done another leaf design that I did or I do is I come up like this, 
come back down and I pretend I'm in this in the center of the leaf and go up like that come down and then I go up and oops come back down in the center again and come up and up and you should turn the machine or stop the machine when you're uncomfortable I just didn't I'm going to do another little flower. So I'm basically just drawing. Better to have an idea of what you're going to do before you do it. And then remember, you can always echo quilt around what you drew. You can also do bigger circles to transfer or to move across to an area that you're going to go. These are what you would call pebbles where they vary in size. And how I do this is I always try to think of the V where the two circles come together. Then you just scoot the bottom frame over and then move the smaller frame to it and you can continue your path. And now you can't see what you've already quilted, but you can see how you can quilt something larger because this is not determining the size of the quilt as it just moves as you move along. I could do another sunflower in here. I have some yellow. And maybe this flower's, you know, not the same direction. Only some of the petals are going to show. But I'm still going to do that line of small circles to indicate the edge of the center. And I'll go up and over two petals, two circles, two circles. Okay, <laughs> I messed up. I'm too far away. And two petals, two petals. And I'm going to come over to these peach or cor coral color. For those of you who are coming in, I actually inked this fabric. So when you watch this on the rewind, because this will be live on my YouTube channel after I'm finished. And you can see how I got the actual fabric color. Notice I just keep scooting the frames around to get where I want to be. So you're not locked in any particular position. And I want to get over to that flower. <laughs> but the idea mm -hmm. is to not stop and tie a knot. And now I can come in, I can do this center and the petal. Whoops. Okay, now as I come around to do the next petal, I, stump, I jump over a couple st stitches and then I come back and my, I head toward that petal to give it a round shape. Come back and go over and then come back. Go over and come back. Go over and come back. Let's see. Now I want to get over and do these sunflowers over here so I can come over. And I'm trying not to have to stop and tie a knot. And I didn't draw this with any more circles, fully round circles. So I've got myself in a pickle. I have to somehow get myself over there and not lose my 
my mind. <laughs> so let's see. I don't know if I can do it backwards. If I can just get to the actual... Oh well, we're just drawing. Not bad. Remember, you don't have to stay within that yellow just because you drew that yellow. Come on, brain kicking. There we go. So you'll be able to pause and rewind me. I have to use my brain and think. <laughs> there we go. So now I'm going to the point. How to draw a flower backwards, upside down and backwards. Now we're going to come back in and I'm going to do smaller ones. Well, I didn't plan for sewing a flower upside down and backwards. But it's working out. Now I'm going to be working on almost to the center again. Heading to the points. Okay, now it's time for the small circles. Definitely an 80-12 needle would have been better. <laughs> And in my mind, I'm saying left and right, left and right, left and right. Now, how do I get out of this situation? Now I'm in the middle. It's all about not stopping. So I got to find my way out. And you do that by just drawing over where you were already. I'm going to echo quilt once around this flower. Scoot, scoot in the frame. Echo quilting is just sewing a distance away from the edge of something. I'm going to spin the quilt around to get to where I can see better. So you're not stuck in any one particular spot. I'm tempted to do this flower right now, but I should go continue. And if you're wondering why I don't lower the needle, it's because I can see where I'm at, so there's no need to lower the needle. And you're less likely to break a needle if you don't use that needle down option on your machine. Circle. Come around. Over, back. So it's kind of like embroidery, but not because we're not filling in, we're tracing around the pattern, which you can do with pre-printed fabric as well. But this is my own art. So I drew this and just with <laughs> real simple methods. For those of you who don't feel like you're artistic, I'm gonna echo quilt around that flower. And now I'm going to do this flower. Echo quilt. Now we're on the next one. Center. And where you're connecting things, you can soften them up with stippling and working with pebbles and going with different types of thread as well, going thinner thread, as I mentioned before. So 
So I'll give you an example. We'll do some more pebbles in here. I get really relaxed when I do this. But it's kind of neat to not have your entire area quilted, I think. There's so many different designs I could show you. One of them is you come out, come over, come back in. Out, come over, come back in. Come out, come over, come back in. So you see how I'm coming back toward that center? If you can draw it with a pen and paper, you can draw it on your quilt. And you might be like me where you find it easier to quilt one way versus another. I have to come over, down. I got my quilt all bunched up over here. I also think my bobbin tension, something's going on with it. I don't usually have any puckering at all. And so now I'm stuck. Now here we go. Go in, come back, come over, and come up, and come back down. Okay, so I need to move over to this area, and it's all about trying not to stop. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And echo quilting is a great way to get where you're going. I've got some area here where I could draw a leaf. Too much stuff on my table. This is because I was inking first, so I've got stuff that's stopping me from moving things, and I, I can't keep the sewing machine. No matter how much more comfortable my body is, it's too much. Making my quilt get bunched up. I don't usually have any puckers, but I am sewing. In case you can't tell, off where there's nothing really holding on one edge of the quilt. And it feels like the tension got tighter on the thread. Oh, it did. So it got caught on my bobbin winder. So that made the tension tighten and that's what made my quilt pucker, was that my thread on the top was being stretched by the fact that it got wrapped around my bobbin winding assembly. And that's because I'm moving the machine all around on the table. So it's my first like bunchy looking, but I may be able to iron it out. We'll see. I'm going to see if you guys have any questions. Hi, Fiona. Did you get your goodies yet? I 
Thank you, Linda. That's a sweet thing to say. All right, let's get back to this. Yeah, Fiona got gifted some the Octi Hoops and some stuff. Okay, I'm going to do another leaf. But I got to think, how do I want to do this leaf? I think I'm going to go one more time. We'll do this kind of a leaf. of fun. I feel like I'm just coloring in a coloring book, but I'm doing it backwards. Here's a, another thing we could we could turn this into a little flower. good to be quiet for a minute. Sorry if I'm boring. <laughs> All right, here's another peach flower or coral color. Circle. Echo quilt. We got an implication of another kind of small leaf. So much fun, you guys. Hope that you're getting your octi hoops out and using them. That's what I get for talking, where I, I didn't have a plan, and now I have this. What was that? That's where you just gotta forgive yourself and go. Nobody really knows if I mess up because there's no pattern. What do you think? You think it's going to be a neat notebook cover? And next week we'll sew a notebook. And I may have another book cover. So you see all the different variations or ways that you can create a leaf? Oh, and then there's this really cool one. Or oh, I did it already. I've done feathers enough. I think there's enough there's enough quilted feathers to last a lifetime on this planet. Okay, there's another sunflower, so I got all excited and I want to get over to it. I get to go backwards again. <laughs> oh my goodness. So if you do this inking, I think you should think about that and have, don't do all of your sunflowers centered with yellow going around like I did because then you might be feeling this pressure to make them backwards. But hey, if you want to challenge yourself, I have to do this.
I can't, I can't talk while I do that leaf. It's a challenge for me. And little circles at the base of leaf kind of look like berries of some kind. I'm almost done, you guys. Almost to the conclusion of Season 2, Episode 30 of Fabrically Speaking Live. When I decided to do this show, I was unsure I'd be able to fill in 52 shows a year. It's getting stuck on my damaged machine. Here we go. Pedal. This is me having to think a lot. I get quiet. So are you guys going to get a drawing pad and start drawing? If you are, then are you going to create yourself a notebook cover? Oopsie. I am never going to get all the things I have to get done if I don't keep better notes. So I'm super excited to be integrating notebooks of varying types into my life. If I didn't practice before going live with this, I never would have been able to go backwards on this flower. This is true free motion. There's no feed dog interaction. This is done without a foot, which is why I can see what I'm doing. I knew this was gonna be cool. <laughs> Been drawing it in my head all week, or for two weeks, really. Trying to give you guys inspiration of things that you can do while learning the art of free motion before you jump on a king size quilt. You want to get practice and it doesn't cost a lot of money to do this. So I'm going to do a little flower here. If you are feeling like you're stressed out because you don't like what you're doing, you're the one that decides when to start and stop your sewing machine. But notice I have not tied a knot. I've been able to do this whole thing without stopping. That is what quilting is. There's really not really a lot of rules, but that's one of them. One is try not to stop and start as often because you don't have to worry about tying knots. How am I going to get to that flower? Do one of those heart shaped flower leaves. Whoopsie. And another one. 
one coming up here. Look, purple flowers. I can do a purple flower right here. <laughs> and we'll do another one. And I'm drawing with my handle, not with the hand that's holding the frames together. This one right here. That's why I'm able to do such small shapes without hurting my body. I gotta get back over there. How can I do it fun? Echo quilting is a nice passage back to where you were. And look, I can do a couple more of these little flowers. If I can find my way back over there again, I'm trying to get to that coral flower that's all the way out there by itself. So it's really me determining what I'm doing, but I'm not aware till I get there of what I want to do. It's a very relaxed process as long as you don't stress about not knowing what you're doing before you begin something. The only thing you know that you're doing is you know that you have areas where there are leaves. Scoot, scoot. Sorry, I just, I can't believe how quiet I am when I'm doing this. Simply because I don't know where I'm going. Deciding as we go. Oh, I think we need another like, little flower. Okay, are you guys talking to one another? I'll tell you what, we're having all kinds of problems with the postal service in the United States right now, too. A lot of people don't want to work. And they have a shortage of employees. Alright, we gotta keep it on happy thoughts. We are quilting. I wanted to get to that flower so bad I got a little bit sloppy. reaching that I'm hungry stage. <laughs> it must be getting close to the end of the two hours I usually give to myself. Now I'm going to go around 
again. And that's where I can safely cut the thread. What do you think? <laughs> Does it look similar to what I imagined? Because I kindly kind of drew this on the computer this morning. I don't like that flat, that leaf. See, now I know that's not a good leaf for this design. <laughs> but I kind of like everything else. Oops. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you like it? I think it's got a different kind of look to it. How's it going to be on my notebook? It'd be better on a big notebook because I did it a lot bigger than, than this notebook. <laughs> it's way too big. Wouldn't you like to carry around a notebook like that? Or don't you think a young child would enjoy taking their notebook to school and have it look like that and feel like that? I might have to use a 8.5 by 11 notebook because I like the whole thing. <sighs> the inks can be found at creativefeet.com. Under the supplies link, let me see if I can uh, show you. What happened? Now you get to see what's on my, oh, oopsie. Oh, this is trippy. All right, let's see if I can overcome this. Now you kind of get to see, well, I should not have moved the screens around. So there's the chat, and it's really far from me. <laughs> so. This is my website, and at the top, <laughs> you go to products, go to supplies. Then you slide down and you'll see these are two different types of inks on there already. And then, like I said, within a few days, the other the Lemures will be on there. And when you're looking at them, you'll see you can click on it and be able to see the color really big. And know that we take painstaking time to make sure the colors that you see on the screen are the colors that you're going to receive. This is one of my projects. This is the Babbling Brook course that you can take in the school. This is another video on my YouTube channel where you can learn how to ink that and put it on a mask. I hesitate to click on anything that might be a video. These cost more, but they're thicker, which means they have more ink. So that's why the cost is more. And you can see this little splatter here. My son created that so you could see what it looks like dry. So now you, what's in the bottle is wet and that splatter is dry. See how different that is from that? So this is a really cool thing. And this video I'm editing now because the inks are finally coming in that I used on this, which are the Lemures. I used these and the Lemures. Oh, gosh. Mm. 
So the Lemures are metallic. They have, oh, and then you'll be able to get all, of, well, not all of them, because there's a lot of them, but you'll be able to get this starter set as well if you can't afford to buy or don't feel like you need this much of any of these. But remember, you can also use this for screen printing, which is super fun as well. And, oh, there's so much I can teach you. So this, the stand, the thread dispenser does come disassembled. You have to assemble it. We've done that before. We've shipped them out. And poor Tinkerbell, she just keeps sneezing. Hi, baby, come here. Oh, come say hi. Oh, I know. We've got allergies this year. So when we used to assemble them and ship them, they'd arrive broken. The, the pegs would be broken off and stuck inside of the holes. So while uh, you have some assembly, it's not complex. Hi, baby. You want to say hi? Can you say hi? So I don't know. Mommy talks a lot in this room. Sometimes she's really quiet in here and sometimes she talks like nonstop. I really wish I could take her allergies from her. What do you think? You like that? She goes, I would love to be up here all the time. That would be more fun. Yeah, we could ship these internationally. I would just, uh, we, we pack them really carefully because they go on airplane, they, they're under pressure. If one of the paints were to experience too much pressure, you might get a little crack in it and in the bottle itself. I've never shipped them internationally, but we've been shipping them and the way we pack them, we bubble them so that they're not, they don't get squished. Inter you'll see we pack things differently when we ship international than we do U.S. You feel hot. You're a hot dog. Yeah. Any other questions, you guys? <laughs> Am I making you hotter? Oh, my goodness. I've been building the ClaireRowley.com, which is my private website for my artwork. And all of it is steps towards the Beyond the Brushstrokes YouTube channel opening. And you'll be able to buy my art if you want to buy any of my art. So that's coming. Hopefully within about a week and a half, that site will be up. And you'll be able to order if you want to buy any of my art. And I'll, and I'm going to be like off, um, selling some of my fiber art as well. Let's see. I wish I could show you some of the stuff that's hanging over there and know that I, I keep saying it, but the quilt, what do you call it? The design wall. I hurt myself, which is partly why I slowed down. I didn't want to tell you I was hurt because I didn't like worrying while I was hurt. Now you know I'm not hurt anymore. But I got up and down off of a ladder too much and hurt my foot. And it was just like I could barely walk. So that slowed down me getting on the ladder to hang the design wall on the ceiling in here. But I'm feeling pretty good now. And uh, I've been thinking about how I can install it so that I don't damage the ceiling and so that it's easy to install or quicker and so that I can give you that advice for if you want to hang yours from the ceiling you can of course hang them from the wall it'd be a lot easier but I have all that stuff on the wall so the only way I'm going to do a design wall in here is if it comes down from the ceiling and uh, then it'll be I was thinking about just maybe sewing on a Saturday and just finishing my quilt live so you guys can uh, chat 
maybe even do a Zoom inside the school and just sew until my quilt's done. You guys pop in, pop out, you talk, and I get that done so that I can teach you how to king size, how to quilt, the king size quilt. So uh, I know that some of you are probably going, yay. Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm sniffling a little. The allergies are definitely. You're so hot. I am being redundant. So that must mean that I need to boogie. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, be sure to do so. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And after the live is ended, if you then hit the thumbs up at the end, that would be awesome. It helps us with the algorithm in YouTube. And I will be back next Thursday to finish making this into an actual book cover, which you can apply toward any type of book that you may want to cover. A Bible or a diary or just a, a notebook to doodle in like I'm doing and I'm going to give you a pattern so that you can duplicate it as well as this pattern will be printable so that you can practice you could even put it on your cutter pillar and put the glass on there and or just put a piece of paper over and trace and and get the rhythm of moving that around and I think, I think that's it right now. So we, we all love you guys so much, Tinkerbell and Chase and I, and I look forward to speaking with you and uh, seeing you next week. And I hope you join create.clairerowley.com, my school, which is in the description below this video. When it ends, you'll see this little arrow that goes like that. And it, I think it says, see more. And when you click on that, it's got all the links to take you to all the different products that you see me use in the video and the school and my website as well. So with that, I will see you next week. Bye.